Hey there, Edgar community. Thanks for joining in today for our Brands Who Stood Out in 2018 webinar. We are so excited to get started in about a minute now. Uh, like I said, go ahead and pop on into the chat on the right-hand side of your screen. Let us know where you're tuning in from, and we will get started in about a minute here. All righty, so it is 1 p.m. here in Denver, Colorado, where I am, which makes it 3 p.m. on the East Coast. Um, thanks for joining in, like I said, and we're going to pop into some really juicy topics today. Looking back at 2018 and some brands that we really noticed on social media. Um, so social media marketing is ultimately all about branding as you it's about building awareness and telling a compelling story about your brand. And to do this, sometimes we all just need a little bit of inspiration to know what's possible in the social media marketing landscape. So today we are going to take a look back at some of the brands that won big in 2018 and some strategies you can take and adopt to your own brand going into 2019. Now, these are some awesome ways to get creative and stay fresh in your social feeds that are accessible to businesses of any size and any stage. So let's jump right in. First and foremost here, social media is a little different than traditional marketing in many ways. First being, it lends itself to community development so much more, and it helps you tell a story around why your product or service matters. This is a great way to help separate yourself from other brands so you can find the right clients for your brand or your service. And this is more important than ever going into 2019 because these days, social media is a crowded place. The internet is so saturated. For example, you all know me, Edgar is not the only social media marketing tool out there, but we differ in some key ways that work better for some people and not as well for others. And one thing social media is really great for is letting our audience know who we are for and who we are not for. After all, we really want to make sure we're attracting people who are going to be really successful using our product and happy while they're using our tool. And let's not all be too jaded. Most of the time, all of the social media we consume is pretty mindless these days. We're just scrolling passively through our feeds, not really engaging a lot with the posts that we see. But creating a community that's aimed at the right people and not being afraid to exclude those that your product doesn't exactly serve properly is really going to help your brand stand out on social media. So don't be afraid to start sharing what you're for, who you're for, who you might not be best for, and what best time people can use your product or service in the life cycle of their business journey. So it all starts with knowing your product, knowing who you built it for, and having a strong message for your followers to understand that too. So going further with this, in a saturated market example, let's take a peek at three different podcasts here on the screen. One is by Tim Ferriss, one by Amy Porterfield, and one by John Lee Dumas. So if you look closely here, they all ended up interviewing marketing expert Seth Godin about his new book in about a week's time span. Now, now this might sound like you all have followed along with our founder, Laura Roeder's um, journey in her own career. You'll know she created a class called Creating Fame. And you can see Seth is using a lot of these concepts in his way of marketing his new book. He's providing so much value to each of their communities by sharing his concepts on each of these podcasts for free, creating a lot of goodwill and getting his name in front of as many people as possible after his book release. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, this seems a little bit like an overkill. But when you really dial in here, each of these podcasters have their own unique audience. And even though they all focus on a lot of the best practices in business and keeping up with people who are doing really well in the business world, they're all tailored to people who are going to engage with their content in their specific tone and their way. For example, Amy Porterfield is geared towards a different crowd than Tim Ferriss listeners are. And there's enough space for each of these podcasters to talk about these concepts as long as they put their own unique voice and their own unique spin on it. 
And they have built a tribe of people who can relate to that voice and can relate to their personality. Now there's room in any crowded market if you can share what makes your business different or what makes your service different. And the main differentiator, guys, it's going to be you. So start learning from others and know that it's okay to be talking about the same concepts that are going on in your industry as long as your voice stands out and is clear and you're not afraid to put you in your business. Now, I want to stay here for a minute longer and touch on Amy Porterfield and highlight her as one of the brands in 2018 that I personally thought really stood out. Amy did so much experimenting on her podcast this year. If you listen back through her whole canon of podcasts, you'll hear a huge difference in the way that she's sharing information now from her very beginning of the podcast. One of the first things that I notice is she's not, she's actually doing something by sharing reviews at the very beginning of her podcast. And it doesn't come across salesy or anything like that at all because she is so genuine and she knows that she wants to help the actual people listening to her podcast. Now, the way she uses these testimonials is pretty cool. What she'll do is she'll actually show how someone took the concepts she presented and took them into the real world. It creates really great social proof, and it also gives her the added benefit of having a testimonial there for people. It is so motivating to hear things like this as she's starting to diversify her content more. And I wanted to touch on this concept we just chatted about was putting yourself into it. Amy started sharing a lot more personal stories on her podcast too, and it's paid off big time. She's sharing things like doing episodes on how her weight has affected her as an entrepreneur and her weight loss journey. Now, at first blush, this might not seem like something that definitely fits in with a business podcast, but she really relates it back to the fact that confidence has a lot to do with her public speaking and with her being someone who is a front person in their business. And it's a really relatable episode to so many people who struggle with these same confidence issues. And it's something that makes her become a little bit more humanized and people can relate to her brand that much stronger. So sharing how she does this, as well as sharing strategies about balancing her work life, her family life, opening up about all of this has brought her a huge boost in engagement, not only in her podcast, but also in her social media communities. So even though these topics may not seem directly related to the mission of her podcasts, it can really help cast a wider net and really help our audience connect and create brand loyalty. So jumping in and going on this brand recognition, we all know that creating your brand voice and having brand guidelines is the key to success these days when you want to stand out. So you want to know how to do this, maybe not just on podcasts. So let's hop on over to social media a little bit. Let's look first at Instagram since it is one of the up and coming networks that is so popular these days for visual content. So when you're creating your brand guidelines in life, let's make sure we're all putting some visual concepts in there too. It's first gonna be a part of identifying what are you an expert in and why should people care? See, people can smell inauthentic marketing from a mile away these days. So I want you to really be clear on what you're an expert in to start sharing that on social media. And you need to make sure that you're not only keeping your brand colors consistent, but your message as well. And one thing that stood out in 2018 is how this is really influencing the Instagram marketplace. For example, we have vlogger Kelsey Simone here, and she has an Instagram following of over 650,000 followers. That's a a huge part of the market. Now she does a lot on beauty tips and a lot on lifestyle. And that is also something that a ton of other people on Instagram are doing. So how she stands out is making sure when people are scrolling through their feed, they can recognize her photos right away. She keeps it clean black and white, and you can see when people actually go to her account, it's going to be this same visual content that pulls people in and triggers your brain knowing, oh, I know that's going to be something from Kelsey. I know she offers me value. I want to stop and read this. So especially if your brand depends on visual aesthetics, you really need to make it a top priority to have this in your brand guidelines. And as a bonus, you want to take a peek here <clears throat> when you're going through this and think how often you want to see beautiful things and might not know how to create them for your own brand? Well, let's jump into that a little bit here. And for anyone thinking that they can't do what Kelsey did, there are so many free tools out there that you can actually use to accomplish this strategy for your own brand. 
One of the things I like to recommend doing is having an account on a program like Canva. What this will allow you to do is experiment with a few different content types and a few different layouts in order to get your postings looking beautiful without having to pay for an actual designer. They have a lot of graphics in there you can use, a lot of typefaces, colors. And the bonus of this is Canva will actually let you save your designs so you can go in and repurpose them, creating that cohesive feed so much easier. Another kind of pro tip that I like to do is whenever I'm going in and looking for topics, you can actually search hashtags on Instagram pretty easily to get a lot of tips. For example, when I search the hashtag content creator, it comes up with all of these brands sharing tips about creating content. And I'm able to scroll through and easily pick and choose the things that speak to me, what I need, like this example over here on the right. So if you're looking for design tips, I'd encourage you not just to stick to Google, but go onto the social networks themselves, see what tips people are sharing, because people really do like to offer value to other content creators out there. So let's jump in here and stick with me on this one because I know it's a little bit of an uncomfortable topic to chat about on a webinar, but I just love the branding of this toilet paper alternative company, Tushy, and what they did in 2018. So taking a look at some of their posts to the right here, they have found a way to make a pretty uncomfortable topic so much more approachable on social media. Because let's admit it, it's pretty hard for a toilet paper company to get followers on social media. So what they've done is they've started to diversify their content and make some great funny posts out of these relatable things that we all experience in life. They share funny motivational posts like this um, last one here with their motivational Monday hashtag, joining in a concept that's already probably trending on Mondays in social media. They share funny tidbits that are just great trivia facts. Our human brain loves trivia facts. We're curious people by nature. So they found a way to include this in their marketing to really encourage people to follow a brand that's not very followable on social media. Last but not least, they have a really great relatable blog where they talk about topics and they humanize something that we all don't like to talk about, but we all experience in life. So it's really great to kind of look at these brands that are doing these relatable things and think how you can take that into your own marketing strategy. As a bonus, what Tushy is really great at also is taking advantage of what is really calling towards younger demographic these days, and that is experience marketing. What they do is they actually end up sending like an oversized toilet out to these marketing agencies full of their product. They ship it to their office space. Now, if your office space receives something like this, I bet you would actually take a picture, share it, if not on social media, text it to your friend. And what a great way to get some word of mouth marketing out there. So think about going into 2019, how you can create these experiences where people want to take pictures, they want to share it, and you want to gain some of that word of mouth marketing because people are gonna know, like, and trust their friends before they're gonna know, like, and trust their brand. So if they can get that kind of over the hump and have a friend actually tell them about your brand, they're actually doing half the work for you. So take a lesson here from Hello Tushy and get some diverse content in there and some relatable experiences so you can really connect with your followers. As we're talking a little bit about vulnerability and connecting with your followers, let's shift gears to influencer Jenna Kutcher. Now, Jenna Kutcher is really known first and foremost for her photography and second for being a pretty amazing businesswoman who teaches classes on social media best practices. Her content is on so many different platforms and she has done a really great job getting a devoted following. Now the key to Jenna Sixty is her ability to be so vulnerable and so transparent about every aspect of her life on social media and in her branding. In these two posts you can see here, in one she's sharing a story about her pregnancy journey, and the other she's sharing a story about how hard it is to meet friends as an adult and as a solopreneur. These are really relatable experiences to her community. And when it comes down to it, if we want to understand why she's doing this, it is to make sure that people know her and know who she is for. And she has such a great understanding of who she is showing up for and why she wants to relate to them. Because being real is the best way to be relatable on social media. 
And when it comes down to it, if we want to understand why algorithms on social media exist at all, it's really because they're there to get rid of the short-term spermy, inauthentic marketing that no one wants to see in their feeds. The networks have this way of wanting to keep you within their platform, so they want to show you real content that you want to engage with. And Jenna's done a really great job doing this authentic marketing to get around those algorithms. And her posts show up in all of the Explore feeds on Instagram. And she's done a really great job of making herself relatable, diversifying her content, and really making sure she stood out in 2018. So take away this lesson from Jenna and put you into your social media. And remember, if all else fails and you're still having trouble sharing your personality and your content, I want to give you kind of a tip that's going to be a little bit funny. But anonymous marketing and not putting yourself in there is kind of akin to going into a bank in a mask. If you're going to walk into a bank with a mask on your face and not show yourself, you best believe people are going to look at you funny, maybe even call the cops on you. But if you walk into that same bank as a real person showing who you are, you'll get the service you need. So showing your followers that same respect and creating that trust and connection is a really standout way to see these brands who are gaining so many followers on social media in 2018. That's what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, we really want real connections with our community. So don't be afraid to share your struggles and share the real you to gain those followers and be as real as possible when you do this. If it's hard for you and your talents lie more kind of on the business side of things and the analytical side of things, which we all need as well, one trick I like to recommend is to pretend that you're texting a friend. Pretend that you're writing to them in a letter or email. It's a great way to make sure your social media is coming across super friendly and really relatable. It's a good filter to make sure you're sounding authentic, to make sure your audience knows who you are, and having your real voice show. So go through this filter and look at your posts and ask yourself, does this give a reason for someone to like it? Does this sound like me? And you'll see a lot of great um, effects in the amount of engagement that post is going to get. The added benefit here of sharing personal stories and creating that connection is that people are going to talk about it more. People don't want to talk about brands in their day-to-day -day conversations, but they will talk about something that they saw a real person do on social media. So make sure you're tailoring your content as best as possible to sound like you and to make sure you're standing out. As we go on here, the brand that everyone is, seems to be talking about for 2018 in social media land when it comes to Instagram stories is Airbnb. So Instagram stories really made a splash this year. And one of the things that people are trying to gain is that following of people watching all the way through. Now, there's been a ton of studies done that show different ways that you can do this and that show different links. Um, there was one that was just released that's saying about seven frames is the best to hook people to watch it from the beginning to the end. But of course, everyone's audience is a little bit different. So you want to experiment with this a little bit to make sure it's right for your community. But what Airbnb does so well here is they have found the perfect way to keep people watching and to hook people in from the very first frame. You can see here, they slowly reveal content throughout their Instagram story, and it encourages users to move from next frame to the next so they can see that answer at the end. It's also a really engaging post. They're asking people to actually engage with them and tap on that, can you guess if we're in Auckland or Sydney? And again, people want to engage on social media. After all, you want to keep that social in social media. So think about ways your brand can get really fun when you're trying to gain the attention on Instagram stories. Stories are really interesting in 2018 because they are pretty new. And you, it's kind of hard to get an idea of how your stories are doing. So I wanted to touch really here quickly <clears throat> about some data points that we really recommend paying attention to when you're trying to gain, um, ascertain the effectiveness of your Instagram stories. The first and foremost, it's completion rate. Who's watching from beginning to end? Next, it's going to be reach and impression. So how many people are you reaching? How many people are actually engaging with that? Um, you know, pay attention to when people are exiting. Are they exiting on the first? Are they exiting on the third? And see when people are exiting to try to tailor your content to get people to watch it all the way through. 
And if you're just getting started, we also recommend keeping it pretty simple. If you're not sure what to post, you can just do some stock images with some text about your company, about the value you can add to people's lives over it, and start testing out different times a day to see when your audience is actually watching these Instagram stories. Stories are really cool too, because as um, a New Yorker article actually back in 2013 explained it in this way that our mind actually focuses on things better when there's changes on the page or when there's changes on the screen, which is why bullet points and numbered lists are really, really effective on social media. You can kind of think of it this way. If you're going to the grocery store, you're not going to write a whole paragraph. You want that bulleted list. And social media is kind of that same way. It allows us to make decisions faster if we want to engage with that content. It allows us to stay happier because we don't have to sludge through a whole paragraph of content. So stories are a great way to keep that change, to keep your brain interested, as well as to get people to really engage with that content that much more. And on top of that, with all of this information out there, the reason that we really want to make sure that you're paying attention to stories is because it is a new platform. So if you are comparing your data to other things, make sure you also compare it to your data in your emails and your organic posts to see how they're matching up and make sure stories is right for your brand. All right, moving on to the next 2018 brand that stood out is Daily Pie. Now, this company, Daily Pie, is one of the most heartwarming stories in 2018, in my humble opinion. And it's not just attractive to me because their founder has the same name as me, but founder Megan Daly created a small pie company in Brooklyn, New York. Unfortunately, Megan was diagnosed in cancer halfway through developing this company. But in this cycle of going through this journey and having this really hard time, she put her personal story out there. And what happened was amazing. She had developed such a strong following in the quality of her pies that her followers actually created a GoFundMe for her to help her keep her business alive in this time that she wasn't able to have her store open and wasn't able to sell as many pies so they could cover the rent for her as she was going through this. Now, Megan's doing much better now, and it's a really great way to see that you can create some powerful followers if you're sharing your story and getting it out there. Now, I don't want to just leave it at that here. I also want to take this emotionally driven advertising is going on in all sorts of brands these days. So think about how you can emotionally engage your audience with your story. And the other thing that we want to do here is really show the brilliance of this potato chip pie post. You want to have something that, of course, your audience can reimagine and that it's really shareable. Who doesn't want to share this cool kind of funky pie with their followers? But second here, I'm not sure if you can see it on the screen, but you can see this was shared once in October and once in November. Now, the status update above it, you'll see says a case of the Mondays in both of them. This recycling content aspect is so important. Now, Megan doesn't have to spend the time to come up with a whole new concept when she wants to share this. She knows that this works well, so she's reshared her evergreen content here, and she's not ha having to reinvent the wheel and waste that creative mind space when there's something that already works. So think about ways that you can repurpose some of your best status updates to reshare them, to really hit home. And remember, you see everything you post on social media, but your followers don't see everything you post on social media. So it's a great way to make sure that you're not having to double up on work always. Moving on a little bit here, in 2018, we saw Twitter chats do some really great work, not only for our own brand, but other brands out there. Now, Twitter chats are pretty cool, and learning to write on social media or blogging or anywhere online, it's a skill, it's not a talent. So you wanna make sure you're practicing your skill by joining some Twitter chats before you start your, your own. And same goes for how to act. So our friends over at Content Strategy here, we do a Twitter chat with them pretty regularly on Tuesdays. If you wanna keep up to date on them, I suggest following us on Twitter or following us on Instagram, at me, Edgar. Um, what we do is we'll always announce the topic ahead of time and when the chat will be so you can get ready and get in the mind space of what you want to share and get some really awesome online networking going on. It's a great way to meet people, to talk about what's going on in your industry, and to get your brand name out there. 
So you can see here how Twitter chat actually works is someone will be leading it, the moderator, and they'll ask questions. And then others will start to share their feedback. So over here on the right, this is from our founder, Laura Roeder, and she's answering these questions so that people can learn and chat back with her. <clears throat> it's again, a great way for you to connect with people in your industry, do some networking and get your brand voice out there. If you do want to start your own Twitter chat, or if you do want to learn what people in the industry are doing, I recommend that you really do go in. All right, guys, I am so sorry about that. It looks like Google Hangout did kind of drop us there now. Um, so let us pick right back up where we left off and appreciate your patience here. Um, so with these Twitter chats, like I was saying, what Laura is really great at doing is answering these questions, getting the brand name out there, and really making sure that we have a good connection with the community who's really interested in talking about the same things as us. So going along a little bit further here, another thing that I like here is what company Supreme T-shirts do. Now what Supreme T-shirts do is they are so good at creating an exclusive exclusive content marketing strategy. So they put out a t-shirt every time that they release one of their products, what they actually do is make it exclusively limited. You can see from their founder here, they say, if we can sell 600 t-shirts, I make 400. Now this may seem strange, but it has developed such a cult following that you can see over here on the right side is actually a line lining up, getting ready to want to actually gain these t-shirts and get the added benefit of um, having this exclusive content that not a lot of people can get. So what this can teach you is if you do have something and you can make it a little bit scarce, this is actually a really great thing that humans kind of latch onto. Now we don't want you to going and kind of making these things up that aren't authentic, but it works so well for their brand that they actually just close their store when all of the t-shirts are sold out. And it's a great way, again, to get some people noticing this because people want to brag about getting one of these t-shirts. So they actually start to share it on social media. They post pictures. They get all of these things out there so that people are actually really excited about going there and getting that snapshot for their own Instagram, creating that user-generated content. And it's a great way they can then get that free marketing and their brand is in front of all of their followers' eyes. So going a little bit further, here in 2018, we saw some big shifts from LinkedIn. First and foremost being that Microsoft actually purchased LinkedIn this year. And some of the things that they're doing is they're actually putting a really big 
um, skill on LinkedIn video. Their algorithm loves video these days, as most platforms do. Everyone's trying to compete with YouTube. They're trying to get viewers over. So the algorithms are going to start serving this up. So in 2019, definitely take advantage of this in your brand. So who um, Goldie Chan is, is, she is actually really great at LinkedIn videos. And this may seem a little bit different um, when you're thinking about your business, but I want you to kind of take a step back and realize that LinkedIn is a platform that has kind of pre-qualified buyers. These are business people who really have purchase authority. So they're allowed to make the decisions of purchasing maybe a little bit more than followers on Facebook do. So if you're not seeing really great engagement on your Facebook Live videos, I suggest coming over and trying to share some on LinkedIn and testing out this platform and being a little bit more experimental on there these days as it starts to shift more. On LinkedIn, what Goldie recommends doing is starting out small, so making these one minute videos, and it's gonna force you to be a little bit more creative and it's gonna force you to get your message across in a really concise way and that's actually what she says is going to make people respect you a little bit more. You're not wasting their time. You're doing these short videos really quick for them. And that will then allow you to get a little bit more bigger and a little bit more longer as you start to gain a really great tribe following. So make sure that you do have some really well edited videos and start sharing them on LinkedIn. Um, you know, as you do start to do this, consistency is key on any social network. So uh, assume and start to take in the fact that you can do things like have episodic content even on LinkedIn. So always leave one of your videos with a teaser on what you're going to talk about next time so that your community can then come over and know that next week they want to tune back in. So in 2018, we saw some really cool stuff from brands on LinkedIn. And I would definitely encourage you to get out there and start experimenting. All right, contests for engagement, guys, has been huge in 2018. It was definitely a year of contest, bundles, influencer marketing, all of this fun stuff. And we here at Edgar really think this is gonna continue into 2019. Why? Because contests are pretty fun. They produce competition and community, two things that humans love and crave more than anything on social media, and they're actually really shareable content sources as well. Shareable content means that people are actually going to want to share this with their friends because they want their friends to have the chance to win all of this awesome stuff that your, con your brand is putting out there. So if you do end up trying these content creation processes and asking people to tag them in a photo for a chance to win a free year of your software or to win a free t-shirt or whatever your service or product is, remember to make it really easy and obvious. Blender's Eyewear is actually a sunglasses um, brand that does this really well. Every time they run a contest, they have that hashtag right in their Instagram byline there so people can find it. Their followers are trained to know to where to go for it. So think about ways you can start to really have your followers expect things from you and really have them want to see this as you start to run these contests. Excuse me. And as a bonus, user-generated content then can then come from all of these photos that are being tagged in them. You can do, you know, hey, this was our runner up. Look how they're wearing our product, our service, and get some of that content to really humanize and make that social proof happen for your brand. Next, guys, I think I've talked about Glossier about 10 different times in webinars this year, but it's really worth repeating that their strategy of building a community first then finding their product is truly worth highlighting why social media is so amazing. So if you don't know the story of Glossier, their CEO actually started it as a blog. It was a place for people to share makeup tips and tricks and to connect with others interested in beauty topics. From there, she actually pivoted into a product-based company, making her own cosmetics, but still keeping her marketing focused hardcore on community. So if you look at your Instagram or Facebook, you'll see that it's full of user-generated content. It's full of bold and reviews and really helpful articles, not that much promotion of their actual content. And that's because Glossier understands that people will seek it out, but what they want from their Facebook marketing is a community to engage with and talk with them about things. So they use real life people to share their tips and tricks, and they've really gained a lot of success in 2018, having this following first, and then creating a product. So if you're just starting out, don't be afraid to find your tribe first 
make them fall in love with you as a brand and don't be afraid to pivot if something else pulls your passion one way or another. And finally, with Glossier here, they know how to make the most elegant sale when it comes to promotional posts. Now, we talk here a lot about the 80-20 rule at Edgar. So 80% of your posts should be really value-added, educational, entertaining posts. And then about 20% can be more promotional. But here you can see a post from Glossier really understands their market, really makes sure that they want to make everything they put out there shareable. You can see this advertisement says, me. Okay, time to shop for my loved ones. Glossier, everything is 20% off. Me, I mean, I love myself, so I'm technically a loved one. What a simple way to get your sale out there, yet still make it so fun to look at on social media. A lot of people ended up sharing this post because we all probably know someone who we can relate to this feeling with. So think how you can kind of bring your brand voice into your promotional content to make it a little bit funnier and gain the success that Glossier did in 2018. So as you do start to think a little bit more about going into 2019, brands who really won this year really created content that was really compelling to make people think, huh, I want to learn more about this brand. And brands who are winning right now are really sticking to this rule of thumb that they want to promote across multiple platforms. So you need to be on all of the big players, the Twitters, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagrams, but also experiment where your community is on other platforms. Even if you don't want people to be following you, <clears throat> Even if you know that your followers aren't there, you can learn a lot by testing out these other platforms and you can take that knowledge back to the platform where your followers are. And remember, everyone is in a different point in their buying journey. Most people don't really care about your product until they need it. So you need to find a way to make sure that people care about your social media and want to keep following you. And that's all about doing your educational, entertaining, and really making sure you're consistently showing up for people. A schedule like Edgar can definitely help with that. So if you do have any questions at all about how to set up some really great consistent um, post to engage with your community, reach out to support at meegger.com and we're more than happy to show you around if you're not a user yet or talk about the best way that you can set up your account to achieve your goals in 2019. Thank you so much for joining today, guys. Sorry about that little interruption there. The internet was not liking me there for a minute and really appreciate you sticking to the end. Um, one thing we are loving to do these days is create more community on our Twitter page. So you guys, what I wanna challenge you to do today is take one tip from today, whether it's sharing a little bit more of your personality out there, whether it's getting a really great promotional post that matches your brand voice or revamping your color scheme on your Instagram page or testing out a LinkedIn video or any of these concepts that we've talked about and go ahead and tag at me Edgar when you do. Let's keep each other accountable. And the sooner you start doing this, the sooner you start experimenting, the more you're going to know how to iterate and the more success you're going to find in social media marketing. Again, thanks for joining. Support at meegger.com or comment below with any feedback or questions. Um, we'll do doing a few more webinars. Of course, we'll be starting them again in 2019. So let us know if there are any specific topics you guys are interested in learning. Thanks so much for joining and have an awesome rest of your Tuesday.